to 8 weeks. The embryonic period, or period of organogenesis, occurs from the 3rd to the 8th weeks of development and is the time when each OF the three germ layers, ectoderm, mesoderm, and endoderm, gives rise to a number of specific tissues and organs. By the end OF the embryonic period, the main organ systems have been established, rendering the major features OF the external body form recognizable by the end of the second month. Derivatives of the ectodermal germ layer, at the beginning of the third week of development, the ectodermal germ layer has the shape of a disc that is broader in the cephalic than in the caudal region, Fig 1. Appearance of the notochord and precordal mesoderm induces the overlying ectoderm to thicken and form the neural plate, Fig 2 AB. Cells OF the plate make up the neuroectoderm, and their induction represents the initial event in the process of neurulation. Molecular regiation of neural induction upregulation of fibroblast growth factor, FGF, signaling together with inhibition of the activity of bone morphogenetic protein 4, BMP4, a transforming growth factor J3, TGFP, family member responsible for ventralizing ectoderm and mesoderm, causes induction of the neural plate. FGF signaling probably promotes a neural pathway by an unknown mechanism while it represses BMP transcription and upregulates expression of CHORD in and noggin, which inhibit BMP activity. In the presence of BMP4, which permeates the mesoderm and ectoderm of the gastrulating embryo, ectoderm is induced to form epidermis, and mesoderm forms intermediate and lateral plate mesoderm. If ectoderm is protected from exposure to BMPs, its default state is to become neural tissue. Secretion of three other molecules, noggin, cordon, and folostatin, inactivates BMP. These three proteins are present in the organizer, primitive node, notochord, and precordal mesoderm. They neuralize ectoderm by inhibiting BMP and cause mesoderm to become notochord and paraxial mesoderm, dorsalizes mesoderm, however, these neural inducers induce only forebrain and midbrain types of tissues. Induction OF caudal neural plate structures, hindbrain and spinal cord, depends on two secreted proteins, WNT3A and FGF. In addition, retinole acid, RA, appears to play a role in organizing the cranial to caudal axis because it can cause respecification of cranial segments into more caudal ones by regulating expression of homeobox genes. Neuralation, neuralation is the process whereby the neural plate forms the neural tube. One of the key events in this process is lengthening OF the neural P8 and body axis by the phenomenon OF convergent extension, whereby there is a lateral to medial movement of cells in the plane of the ectoderm and mesoderm. The process is regulated by signaling through the planar cell polarity pathway and is essential for neural tube development. As the neural plate lengthens, its lateral edges elevate to form neural folds, and the depressed midregion forms the neural groove, Fig 2. Gradually, the neural folds approach each other in the midline, where they fuse, Fig 3 AB. Fusion begins in the cervical region, fifth somite, and proceeds cranially and caudally, Fig 3 CD. As a result, the neural tube is formed. Until fusion is complete, the cephalic and caudal ends of the neural tube communicate with the amniotic cavity by way of the anterior, cranial, and posterior, caudal, neuropores. Respectively, Figs 3 QD and 4A. Closure of the cranial neuropore occurs at approximately day 25, 18 to 20 somite stage, whereas the posterior neuropore closes at day 28, 25 somite stage, Fig.4 B. Neuralation is then complete, and the central nervous system is represented by a closed tubular structure with a narrow caudal portion, the spinal cord, and a much broader cephalic portion characterized by a number of dilations, the brain vesicles. Neural crest cells as the neural folds elevate and fuse, cells at the lateral border or crest of the neuroectoderm begin to dissociate from their neighbors. This cell population, the neural crest, figs.5 and.6, will undergo an epithelial to mesenchymal transition as it leaves the neuroectoderm by active migration and displacement to enter the underlying mesoderm. Mesoderm refers to cells derived from the epiblast and extraembryonic tissues. 
Mesenchyme refers to loosely organized embryonic connective tissue regardless of origin. Crest cells from the trunk region leave the neuroectoderm after closure of the neural tube and migrate along 1OF2 pathways, 1, a dorsal pathway through the dermis, where they will enter the ectoderm through holes in the basal lamina to form melanocytes in the skin and hair follicles. 2, 2, a ventral pathway through the anterior half of each somite to become sensory ganglia, sympathetic and enteric neurons, Schwann cells, and cells of the adrenal medulla, Fig 5. Neural crest cells also form and migrate from cranial neural folds, leaving the neural tube before closure in this region, Fig 6. 3. These cells contribute to the craniofacial skeleton as well as neurons for cranial ganglia, glial cells, melanocytes, and other cell types, Table 1, P77. Neural crest cells are so fundamentally important and contribute to so many organs and tissues that they are sometimes referred to as the fourth germ layer. Evolutionarily, these cells appeared at the dawn of vertebrate development and expanded this group extensively by perfecting a predatory lifestyle. Molecular regulatlon of neural crest induction Induction of neural crest cells requires an interaction at the junctional border of the neural plate and surface ectoderm, epidermis, Fig 5a. Intermediate concentrations of BMPs are established at this boundary compared to neural plate cells that are exposed to very low levels OF BMPs and surface ectoderm cells that are exposed to very high levels. The proteins noggin and cordon regulate these concentrations by acting as BMP inhibitors. The intermediate concentrations of BMPs, together with FGF and WNT proteins, induce PAX3 and other transcription factors that specify the neural plate border, Fig 5a. In turn, these transcription factors induce a second wave of transcription factors, including SNAIL and F0XD3, which specify cells as neural crest, and slug, which promotes crest cell migration from the neuroectoderm. Thus, the fate of the entire ectodermal germ layer depends on BMP concentrations, a high levels induce epidermis formation. B intermediate levels, at the border of the neural plate and surface ectoderm. Induce the neural crest. C very low concentrations cause formation of neural ectoderm. BMPs, other members of the TGF-3 family, and FGFs regulate neural crest cell migration, proliferation, and differentiation, and abnormal concentrations of these proteins have been associated with neural crest defects in the craniofacial region of laboratory animals. By the time the neural tube is closed, two bilateral ectodermal thickenings, the otic placodes and the lens placodes, become visible in the cephalic region of the embryo, Fig.4b. Point four B. During further development, the otic placodes invaginate and form the otic vesicles, which will develop into structures needed for hearing and maintenance of equilibrium. At approximately the same time, the lens placodes appear. These placodes also invaginate and, during the fifth week, form the lenses OF the eyes. In general terms, the ectodermal germ layer gives rise to organs and structures that maintain contact with the outside world, the central nervous system, the peripheral nervous system, the sensory epithelium of the ear, nose, and eye. The epidermis, including the hair and nails in addition, it gives rise to the following, the subcutaneous glands, the mammary glands, the pituitary gland, enamel OF the teeth, clinical correlates, neural tube defects, neural tube defects, and TDS, result when neural tube closure fails to occur. If the neural tube fails to dose in the cranial region, then most of the brain fails to form, and the defect is called anencephaly, Fig 74. If closure fails anywhere from the cervical region caudally, then the defect is called spina bifida Fig 7 BC, the most common M on site for spina bifida to occur is in the lumbosacral region, Fig 7C, suggesting that the closure process in this area may be more susceptible to genetic and slash or environmental factors. Anencephaly is a lethal defect, and most of these cases are diagnosed prenatally and the pregnancies term in at. Children with spina bifida lose a degree of neurological function based on the spinal cord level of the lesion and its severity. 
occurrence of these types of defects is common and varies by different regions. For example, prior to fortification of enriched flour with folic acid in the United States, the overall rate was 1 in 1,000 births, but in North and South Carolina, the rate was 1 in 500 births. In parts of China, rates were as high as 1 in 200 births. Various genetic and environmental factors apparently account for the variability. Genetic causes of NTDS remain elusive. Although recently, mutations in the Vangel genes have been identified and associated with familial cases of these defects. The Vangel genes are part of the planar cell polarity pathway that regulates convergent extension, the process that lengthens the neural tube and is necessary for normal closure to occur. Regardless of the region or country where NTDS occur, rates have been reduced significantly following folic acid administration. For example, rates throughout the United States are now approximately 1 in 1,500 births. It is estimated that 50% to 70% of NTDS can be prevented if women take 400 xg of folic acid daily, the dose present in most multivitamins beginning three months prior to conception and continuing throughout pregnancy. Because 50% of pregnancies are unplanned, it is recommended that all women of childbearing age take a multivitamin containing 400 microg of folic acid daily. If a woman has had a child with an NTD or if there is a history of such defects in her family, it is recommended that she take 400 microg of folic acid daily and then 4000 microg per day starting one month before she tries to become pregnant and continuing through the first three months of pregnancy. Derivatives of the mesodermal germ layer, initially, cells OF the mesodermal germ layer form a thin sheet OF loosely woven tissue on each side of the midline, Fig 8. By approximately the 17th day, however, cells close to the midline proliferate and form a thickened plate of tissue known as paraxial mesoderm. More laterally, the mesoderm layer remains thin and is known as the lateral plate. With the appearance and coalescence of intercellular cavities in the lateral plate, this tissue is divided into two layers, Fig 8 BC. A layer continuous with mesoderm covering the amnion, known as the somatic or parietal mesoderm layer 2. A layer continuous with mesoderm covering the yolk sac, known as the splanchnic or visceral mesoderm layer, figs.8 CD and.9, together, these layers won a newly formed cavity, the intraembryonic cavity, which is continuous with the extraembryonic cavity on each side of the embryo. Intermediate mesoderm connects paraxial and lateral plate mesoderm, figs.8 BD.9. Paraxial mesoderm by the beginning of the third week, paraxial mesoderm begins to be organized into segments. These segments, known as somatomers, first appear in the cephalic region of the embryo, and their formation proceeds cephalocaudally. Each somatomera consists of mesodermal cells arranged in concentric whorls around the center of the unit. In the head region, Somatomers form in association with segmentation of the neural plate into neuromers and contribute to mesenchyme in the head. From the occipital region caudally, somatomers further organize into somates. The first pair of somates arises in the occipital region of the embryo at approximately the 20th day of development, Fig 2 CD. From here, new somates appear in craniocaudal sequence, Fig 10 at a rate of approximately three pairs per day until, at the end of the fifth week, 42 to 44 pairs are present, figs 4b and 10. There are four occipital, eight cervical, 12 thoracic, five lumbar, five sacral, and eight to 10 coccygeal pairs. The first occipital and the last five to seven coccygeal somates later disappear, while the remaining somates form the axial skeleton. Because somates appear with a specified periodicity, the age of an embryo can be accurately determined during this early time period by counting somates. Table 2. Molecular regulatlon of somite formation, formation of segmented somates from unsegmented presomitic, paraxial, mesoderm, fig 10, depends on a segmentation doc established by cyclic expression of a number of genes. 
The cyclic genes include members of the NOTCH and WNT signaling pathways that are expressed in an oscillating pattern in presomitic mesoderm. Thus, notch protein accumulates in presomitic mesoderm destinate to form the next somite and then decreases as that somite is established. The increase in notch protein activates other segment patterning genes that establish the somite. Boundaries for each somite are regulated by RA and a combination OFFGF8 and WNT3A. RA is expressed at high concentrations cranially and decreases in concentration caudally, whereas the combination of FGF8 and WNT3A proteins is expressed at higher concentrations caudally and lower ones cranially. These overlapping expression gradients can tee all the segmentation dock and activity of the notch pathway. Somite differentiation When somites first form from presomitic mesoderm, they exist as a ball of mesoderm, fibroblast-like, cells. These cells then undergo a process of epithelization and arrange themselves in a donut shape around a small lumen, Fig 11. By the beginning of the fourth week, cells in the ventral and medial walls of the somite lose their epithelial characteristics, become mesenchymal, fibroblast-like, again, and shift their position to surround the neural tube and notochord. Collectively, these cells form the sclerotome that will differentiate into the vertebrae and ribs. Cells at the dorsomedial and ventrolateral edges OF the upper region of the somite form precursors for muscle cells, whereas cells between these two groups form the dermatome, Fig 11b. Cells from both muscle precursor groups become mesenchymal again and migrate beneath the dermatome to create the dermomyotomy, Fig 11 CD. In addition, cells from the ventrolateral edge migrate into the parietal layer of lateral plate mesoderm to form most of the musculature for the body wall, external and internal oblique and transversus abdominis muscles, and most OF the limb muscles, Fig 11B. Cells in the dermomyotomy ultimately form dermis for the skin of the back and muscles for the back, body wall, intercostal muscles, and some limb muscles. Each myotome and dermatome retains its innervation from its segment of origin, no matter where the cells migrate. Honey, each somite forms its own sclerotome, the tendon cartilage and bone component, its own myotome, providing the segmental muscle component, and its own dermatome, which forms the dermis of the back. Each myotome and dermatome also has its own segmental nerve component. Molecular regulatlon of somite differentiation signals for somite differentiation arise from surrounding structures, including the notochord, neural tube, epidermis, and lateral plate mesoderm, Fig 12. The secreted protein products of the NOGGIN genes and sonic hedgehog, SHH, produced by the notochord and floor plate OF the neural tube, induce the ventromedial portion of the somite to become sclerotome. Once induced, Sclerotome CEUS express the transcription factor PAXL, which initiates the cascade of cartilage and bone forming genes for vertebral formation. Expression of PAX3, regulated by WNT proteins from the dorsal neural tube, marks the dermomyotomy region of the somite. WNT proteins from the dorsal neural tube also target the dorsomedial portion of the somite causing it to initiate expression of the muscle-specific gene MYF5 and to form primaxial muscle precursors. Interplay between the inhibiting protein BMP4, and probably FGFs, from the lateral plate mesoderm and activating WNT products from the epidermis direct the dorsolateral portion of the somite to express another muscle-specific gene MYOD, and to form primaxial and abaxial muscle precursors. The midportion of the dorsal epithelium of the somite is directed by neurotrophin 3, NT3, secreted by the dorsal region of the neural tube, to form dermis. Intermediate mesoderm Intermediate mesoderm, which temporarily connects paraxial mesoderm with the lateral P8, figs.8 D and 9, differentiates into urogenital structures. In cervical and upper thoracic regions, it forms segmental cell clusters, Fitcher nephrotomies, whereas more caudally, it forms an unsegmented mass of tissue, the nephrogenic cord. Excretory units of the urinary system and the gonads develop from this partly segmented, peru-unsegmented intermediate mesoderm. 
lateral plate mesoderm lateral plate mesoderm splits into parietal, somatic, and visceral, splanchnic, layers, which line the intraembryonic cavity and surround the organs, respectively, figs.8 cd, 9, and 13a. Mesoderm from the parietal layer, together with overlying ectoderm, forms the lateral body wall folds, fig 13a. These folds, together with the head, cephalic, and tail, caudal, folds, close the ventral body wall. The parietal layer of lateral plate mesoderm then forms the dermis of the skin in the body wall and limbs, the bones and connective tissue of the HMBS, and the sternum. In addition, sclerotome and muscle precursor cells that migrate into the parietal layer of lateral plate mesoderm form the costal cartilages, limb muscles, and most of the body wall muscles. The visceral layer of lateral plate mesoderm, together with embryonic endoderm, forms the wall OF the gut tube, fig 135. Mesoderm cells of the parietal layer surrounding the intraembryonic cavity form thin membranes, the mesothelial membranes, or serous membranes, which will line the peritoneal, pleural, and pericardial cavities and secrete serous fluid, fig 13b. Mesoderm cells of the visceral layer form a thin serous membrane around each organ. Blood and blood vesicles, blood cells and blood vessels also arise from mesoderm. Blood vessels form in two ways, one vasculogenesis, whereby vessels arise from blood islands, fig 14. Two and angiogenesis, which entails sprouting from existing vessels. The first blood islands appear in mesoderm surrounding the wall of the yolk sac at three weeks of development and slightly later in lateral P8 mesoderm and other regions, fig 15. These islands arise from mesoderm cells that are induced to form hemangioblasts, a common precursor for vessel and blood cell formation. Although the first blood cells arise in blood islands in the wall of the yolk sac, this population is transitory. The definitive hematopoietic stem cells are derived from mesoderm surrounding the aorta in a site near the developing mesonephric kidney called the aortagonad mesonephros region, AGM. These cells colonize the liver, which becomes the major hematopoietic organ of the embryo and fetus from approximately the second to seventh months of development. Stem cells from the liver colonize the bone marrow, the definitive blood-forming tissue, in the seventh month of gestation, Thereafter, the liver loses its blood forming function. Molecular regulation of blood vessel formation FGF2 induces blood island development from competent mesoderm cells that form hemangioblasts. Hemangioblasts are directed to form blood cells and vessels by vascular endothelial growth factor, VEGF, which is secreted by surrounding mesoderm cells. The signal to express VEGF may involve H0XB5 which upregulates the VEGF receptor FLKL, Fig 14. Hemangioblasts in the center of blood islands form hematopoietic stem cells, the precursors of all blood cells, whereas peripheral hemangioblasts differentiate into angioblasts, the precursors to blood vessels. These angioblasts proliferate and are eventually induced to form endothelial cells by VEGF secreted by surrounding mesoderm cells, Fig 14. This same factor then regulates coalescence of these endothelial cells into the first primitive blood vessels. Once the process of vasculogenesis establishes a primary vascular bed, which includes the dorsal aorta and cardinal veins, additional vasculature is added by angiogenesis, the sprouting of new vessels, Fig 14. This process is also mediated by VEGF which stimulates proliferation of endothelial cells at points where new vessels are to be formed. Maturation and modeling of the vasculature are regulated by other growth factors, including platelet-derived growth factor, PDGF, and TGFP, until the adult pattern is established. Specification of arteries, veins, and the lymphatic system occurs soon after angioblast induction. SHH secreted by the notochord, induces surrounding mesenchyme to express VEGF. In turn, VEGF expression induces the notch pathway, a transmembrane receptor pathway, which specifies arterial development through expression of Fryn2, 
Ephrins are ligands that bind to F receptors in a pathway involving tyrosine kinase signaling. In addition to speciating arteries, expression of EPHR1 and B2 suppresses venous cell fate. Notch signaling also upregulates expression of EPHB4, a vein-specific gene, but how this gene and others specify venous development is not clear. On the other hand, ProXL, a homey domain containing transcription factor, appears to be the master gene for lymphatic vessel differentiation. Vessel outgrowth is patterned, not random, and appears to involve guidance factors similar to those employed by the nervous system. Capillary hemangiomas, capillary hemangiomas are abnormally dense collections of capillary blood vessels that form the most common tumors OF infancy, occurring in approximately 10% of all births. They may occur anywhere but are often associated with craniofacial structures, Fig 164. Facial lesions may be focal or diffuse, with diffuse lesions causing more secondary complications, including ulcerations, scarring, and airway obstruction, M. andibular hemangium as, Fig.16 b. Insulin-like growth factor 2, is high I expressed in the lesions and MIB1 factor promoting abnormal vessel growth. Whether or not VEGF plays a role has not been determined. Derivatives of the endodermal germ layer, the gastrointestinal tract is the main organ system derived from the endodermal germ layer. This germ layer covers the ventral surface of the embryo and forms the roof of the yolk sac, Fig 17a. With development and growth of the brain vesicles, however, the embryonic disc begins to bulge into the amniotic cavity. Lengthening of the neural tube now causes the embryo to curve into the fetal position as the head and tail regions, folds, move ventrally, Fig 17. Simultaneously, Two lateral body wall folds form and also move ventrally to close the ventral body wall, Fig 18. As the head and tail and two lateral folds move ventrally, they pull the amnion down with them, such that the embryo lies within the amniotic cavity, Fig 17 and 18. The ventral body wall closes completely except for the umbilical region where the connecting stalk and yolk sac duct remain attached, Fig 17 and 19. Failure of the lateral body folds to close the body wall results in ventral body wall defects. As a result of cephalocaudal growth and closure of the lateral body wall folds, a continuously larger portion of the endodermal germ layer is incorporated into the body of the embryo to form the gut tube. The tube is divided into three regions, the foregut, midgut, and hindgut, Fig 17c. The midgut communicates with the yolk sac by way of a broad stalk, the vitellin, yolk sac, duct, Fig 17d. This duct is wide initially, but with further growth of the embryo, it becomes narrow and much longer, Fig 17d and 18b. At its cephalic end, the foregut is temporarily bounded by an ectoderm allendoderm all membrane called the oropharyngeal membrane, Fig 17ac. This membrane separates the stomodium, the primitive oral cavity derived from ectoderm, from the pharynx, a part of the foregut derived from endoderm. In the fourth week, the oropharyngeal membrane ruptures, establishing an open connection between the oral cavity and the primitive gut, Fig 17d. The hindgut also terminals temporarily at an ectodermal endodermal membrane, the cloacal membrane, Fig 17c. This membrane separates the upper part of the anal canal, derived from endoderm, from the lower part, called the proctodium, which is formed by an invaginating pit lined by ectoderm. The membrane breaks down in the seventh week to create the opening for the anus. Another important result of cephalocaudal growth and lateral folding is partial incorporation of the allantois into the body of the embryo, where it forms the cloaca, Fig 19a. The distal portion of the allantois remains in the connecting stalk. By the fifth week, the yolk sac duct, allantois, and umbilical vesius are restricted to the umbilical region, Fig 19. The role of the yolk sac is not clear. It may function as a nutritive organ during the earliest stages of development prior to the establishment of blood vessels. It also contributes some of the first blood cells, although this role is very transitory.
One of its main functions is to house germ cells that reside in its posterior wall and later migrate to the gonads to form eggs and sperm. Any, the endodermal germ layer initially forms the epithelial lining of the primitive gut and the intraembryonic portions of the allantois and vitellin duct. During further development, endoderm gives rise to the following, the epithelial lining OF the respiratory tract. The parenchyma of the thyroid, parathyroids, liver, and pancreas. The reticular stroma of the tonsils and the thymus. The epithelial lining of the urinary bladder and the urethra. The epithelial lining OF the tympanic cavity and auditory tube. Pattern in GOF the anteroposterior axis, regulation by homeobox genes. Homeobox genes are known for their homey domain, a DNA binding motif, the homeobox. They code for transcription factors that activate cascades of genes regulating phenomena such as segmentation and axis formation. Many homeobox genes are collected into homeotic clusters, although other genes also contain the homey domain. An important cluster of genes specifying the craniocaudal axis is the homeotic gene complex HOMC in Drosophila. These genes, which contain the antennaptia and bithorax classes of homeotic genes, are organized on a single chromosome as a functional unit. Thus, genes specifying more cranial structures lie at the 3 and OF the DNA and are expressed first, with genes controlling posterior development expressed sequentially and lying increasingly toward the 5 end, Fig 6.20. These genes are conserved in humans, existing as four copies HOXA, HOXB, HOXC, and HOXD which are arranged and expressed like those in Drosophila. Thus, each cluster lies on a separate chromosome, and the genes in each group are numbered 1 to 13, Fig.20. Genes with the same number, but belonging to different clusters, form a paralogous group, such as H0XA4, H0XB4, H0XC4, and H0XD4. The pattern of expression OF these genes, along with evidence from knockout experiments in which mice are created that lack one or more OF these genes, supports the hypothesis that they play a role in cranial to caudal patterning of the derivatives OF all three germ layers. For example, an overlapping expression pattern of the HOX code exists in the somates and vertebrae with genes located more toward the three end in each cluster being expressed in and regulating development OFM or cranial segments, Fig 20. External appearance during the second month, at the end OF the fourth week, when the embryo has approximately 28 somates, the main external features are the somates and pharyngeal arches, Fig 21. The age of the embryo is therefore usually expressed in somates, Table 2. Because counting somates becomes difficult during the second month of development, the age of the embryo is then indicated as the crownum p length, CRL, and expressed in millimeters, table 3. CRL is the measurement from the vertex OF the skull to the midpoint between the apices of the buttocks. During the second month, the external appearance of the embryo is changed by an increase in head size and formation of the limbs, face, ears, nose, and eyes. By the beginning of the fifth week, four limbs and hind limbs appear as paddle-shaped buds, Fig 22. The former are located dorsal to the pericardial swelling at the level OF the fourth cervical to the first thoracic somates, which explains their innervation by the brachial plexus. Hind limb buds appear slightly later just caudal to attachment of ond constriction divides the proximal portion of the buds into two segments, and the three parts characteristic OF the adult extremities can be recognized, Fig 25. Clinical correlates, birth defects most major organs and organ systems are formed during the third to eighth weeks. This period, which is critical for normal development, is therefore called the period of organogenesis or embryogenesis. Stem cell populations are establishing each of the organ primordia, and these interactions are sensitive to insult from genetic and environmental influence. Thus, from the third to eighth weeks is the time when most gross structural birth defects are induced. Unfortunately, the mother may not realize she is pregnant during this critical time, especially during the third and fourth weeks, which are particularly vulnerable. Consequently, she may not avoid harmful influences, 
such as cigarette smoking and alcohol. Understanding the main events of organogenesis is important for identifying the time that a particular defect was induced and, in turn, determining possible causes for the malformation. Summary, the embryonic period, which extends from the third to the eighth weeks of development, is the period during which each OF the three germ layers, ectoderm, mesoderm, and endoderm, gives rise to its own tissues and organ systems. As a result of organ formation, major features of body form are established, Table 4. The ectodermal germ layer gives rise to the organs and structures that maintain contact with the outside world, central nervous system. Peripheral nervous system. Sensory epithelium of ear, nose, and eye. Skin, including hair and nails. Pituitary, mammary, and sweat glands and enamel of the teeth induction of the neural plate is regulated by inactivation of the growth factor BMP4. In the cranial region, inactivation is caused by noggin, cordon, and folostatin secreted by the node, notochord, and precordial mesoderm. Inactivation of BMP4 in the hindbrain and spinal cord regions is affected by WNT3A and FGF. In the absence of inactivation, BMP4 causes ectoderm to become epidermis and mesoderm to ventralize to form intermediate and lateral plate mesoderm. Important components of the mesodermal germ layer are paraxial, intermediate, and lateral plate mesoderm. Paraxial mesoderm forms somatomers, which give rise to mesenchyme of the head and organize into somits in occipital and caudal segments. Somits give rise to the myotome, muscle tissue, sclerotome, cartilage and bone, and dermatome, dermis of the skin, which are all supporting tissues of the body. Signals for somite differentiation are derived from surrounding structures, including the notochord, neural tube, and epidermis. The notochord and floor plate of the neural tube secrete SHH, which induces the sclerotome. Two muscle-forming regions differentiate. One is induced in the dorsomedial region OF the somite by WNT protein secreted by the dorsal portion OF the neural tube. The other is induced in the ventrolateral region of the somite by a combination OF BMP4 and FGF, secreted by lateral plate mesoderm, and by WNT proteins, secreted by the overlying ectoderm. The dorsal midportion of the somite becomes dermis under the influence of NT3, secreted by the dorsal neural tube, Fig 12. Mesoderm also gives rise to the vascular system, i.e., the heart, arteries, veins, lymph vessels, and all blood and lymph cells. Furthermore, it gives rise to the urogenital system, kidneys, gonads, and their ducts, but not the bladder. Finally, the spleen and cortex of the suprarenal glands are mesodermal derivatives. The endodermal germ layer provides the epithelial lining of the gastrointestinal tract, respiratory tract, and urinary bladder. It also forms the parenchyma OF the thyroid, parathyroids, liver, and pancreas. Finally, the epithelial lining OF the tympanic cavity and auditory tube originates in the endodermal germ layer. Craniocaudal patterning of the embryonic axis is controlled by homeobox genes. These genes, conserved from Drosophila, are arranged in four clusters HOXA, HOXB, HOXC, and HOXD on four different chromosomes. Genes toward the three end of the chromosome control development of more cranial structures, those more toward the five end regulate differentiation of more posterior structures. Together, they regulate patterning of the hindbrain and axis OF the embryo, Fig 20. As a result of formation of organ systems and rapid growth of the central nervous system, the initial flat embryonic disc begins to lengthen and to form head and tail regions, folds, that cause the embryo to curve into the fetal position. The embryo also forms two lateral body wall folds that grow ventrally and close the ventral body wall. As a result of this growth and folding, the amnion is pulled ventrally and the embryo lies within the amniotic cavity, Fig.17. Connection with the yolk sac and placenta is maintained through the vitellin duct and umbilical cord, respectively.